Hi there, my name is Ken Mayer and I'm going to be your instructor for this course. Over the last 30 some years, I've been working in some field of information technology. Whether it was with mainframe systems, operating the old dumb terminals back in those days, to uh, the fledglings of uh, Microsoft back when all they had was DOS, to uh, Windows uh, from all varieties, you know, from uh, uh, going through 95, well, well before that with Windows 3.1, but then 95 and then ME and all the rest, all the way up into our current technologies. I've done a lot of work in the virtual environment with uh, Hyper-V and with some other competitor products. I've done a lot of work in the security field over this time as well. So uh, I hope that as we talk about uh, this system center, that I will be able to share with you the uh, skills and the knowledge and the work that I've done into helping you understand what you need to know about the design of this private cloud. Well, we're going to talk about exactly what is System Center and all of the components that make it up. So that's our goal is to kind of give you this preview of all of the different technologies we're going to talk about throughout our course. So we're going to start off first by having a discussion of what is System Center. First of all, it is a suite of management tools. No longer can you purchase just one or two of the components. When you purchase System Center, you're licensing it for the entire suite, although you can choose which ones you want to install, which of those components you'd like to look at or use. What our goal here is going to be is to take you through, as I said, a preview so you have an understanding about what each of these components does as we get into each of these modules that are going to talk about them and how we use them in the management of the cloud. So we'll have our discussions about Operations Manager, the Configuration Manager, the Service Manager, Orchestrator, the Data Protection Manager, and the Virtual Machine Manager. Now, as I was saying, the System Center is a suite of components, licensed as uh, the entire suite, and uh, it's up to you what you use. We no longer have to go through the hassles like we did in some of the history of managing multiple servers or multiple databases like we did before. It wasn't uh, unusual if you were running uh, something like the uh, System Management Server, SMS, and, uh, and trying to deal with that and then figuring out how can you use Configuration Manager at the same time to help you, or can they talk to each other? Can we make them work, or do I have to have different administrators in the different databases and the different servers and have to take my single job that I'm trying to uh, accomplish and find a way to split it out and to utilize these different technologies, and that's what we went through. Microsoft has spent a lot of time fully integrating this product together. It's not what it was when they first imagined some of these uh, products, some of them up to eight years ago. So now what we're going to look at as we talk about it is how they work together and, how, and what they do as individual components and uh, hopefully give you at least the preview of the cross-integration benefits that we have now with this as a suite of components. The main focus, I would say, of the operations manager is monitoring of the ongoing health of whatever it is that you have running within your network. Whether it's uh, looking at the cloud, looking at the components of a cloud, just watching a couple of servers, it's uh, designed to basically help us as uh, we focus on the health of our systems. And the health means more than just an outage, it means poorly performing as well. So it goes by the name System Center Operations Manager. And basically, as an organization, when you lay down that base configuration of your systems and keep them patched and updated, Operation Manager's job is to just monitor the ongoing health, as well as the applications that are installed on the systems. What basically you could think of is for all of these servers that we may be wanting to monitor, whether it's a server, maybe it's a Hyper-V host that I usually draw a little bit longer with uh, the indication that there's virtual machines running inside, whether it's an individual computer component, Maybe it's the switch that they're all connected to. Maybe the routers, the network devices. It is a full, as I said, suite, just of itself, a tool of being able to monitor everything that's out there. It's crucial that we are able to track and be proactive and to have something that can react to issues as they occur. We can create specific rules that uh, look at normal operations. And if something falls out of the standards, at minimum, somebody gets notified. What you're going to see is that as you put Operations Manager together, there are many components, but it does start with the first root management server. 
And you may, depending on the size of your network, have other management servers that are assisting and working on uh, the capabilities of, uh, of uh, this process of gathering information. But I want to focus, just as, as I said, to give you this preview of what happens. So RMS is going to work, as you're going to discover, by installing software on all of these devices that they call an agent. The agent's job is to return information as it detects problems, as it's uh, monitoring processes, as it's monitoring the hardware, and it uh, logs that information to the RMS server. As an administrator, you, of course, have the ability to connect into this thing through uh, a console screen, whether the console is directly on the server or sitting at your desktop. If you're out in the world of the Internet with the web, you can connect to this thing through that Internet to a web-based server that can run a web console so that you can still look and maintain uh, all of the information that's happening. But as you take this, um, and just as an example of what RMS can do, it can be programmed to respond to events that occur, whether it's an actual event or if it's an alert, uh, if it's a status change. It can respond to these things to help us understand when there's a problem in the network and to help us with as uh, quick a remediation as we can. As a matter of fact, we did say you can create a series of rules. We could have a rule that was designed to detect, let's say, that a uh, service has stopped. And if the uh, service has stopped, we can write a rule that uh, says to go out there and uh, go turn that service back on so that we can uh, get that operational again if we wanted to. Now that's a very simplistic form of what this uh, service uh, and server can do. As I said, one of the other rules may have been to go uh, hit an exchange server and send out emails to uh, those people who need to know about uh, things that have uh, gone wrong. So there's plenty of, uh, of uh, options that we can use with RMS. It can even look for that person who is at home. As I said, if I had to go through the internet, we have gateway services that you can use to uh, still have that agent talk to the gateway and then relay your information to the RMS server so we can manage those things that are remote from our network and do so securely over uh, an unsecure uh, internet connectivity. This has, of course, its own database to store information that you may use to uh, create your baselines to be able to know what the norms are so you can detect and determine uh, with your rules as to whether or not you're out of the normals uh, or the normal settings. So I haven't, of course, hit every single key point that there is with the, uh, with the uh, operations manager, but hopefully I've given you kind of like I, uh, I was wanting an overview of what this does for us. And it's important that we have that overview because at the end of this, when I talk about each of these products, I'll try to give you kind of a focus about how the uh, different components within this suite can interact with each other. When it comes to Configuration Manager, as it says, its job is to help you with imaging, updating, updating programs, updating settings, upgrading uh, the capabilities, system patch management. It really is, um, I, I guess you could say, that it starts by laying down an image of an operating system. And we can do that on a bare metal machine. Uh, and, uh, and we can adjust those images as we send them out there. It can work with servers or clients. So as we think about um, how well Configuration Manager can manage things that we need to do and uh, to put automation in there, then it makes sense to um, use, use its technologies for that purpose, just that automation. So as I said, I can throw down an image and suddenly have servers getting up and ready to run. Um, those images can be customized. Customized meaning that after I put the image on there, I can then add other programs if I wanted to. Over time, I can be use this uh, server to maintain my updates, my hot fixes, my service packs. It's, uh, it's a great uh, tool that helps us in being able to get consistency. Um, you know, the, the goal here is to, add, as I said, to add that automation so that uh, these things are done, either scheduled or, um, you know, on a, on a manual basis. But one of the great things is, you know, when it comes to doing updates, as an example, who says that it can only do one of these at a time? Its goal is to do whichever systems whatever updates, whatever upgrades you want, and to uh, be able to hit more than one. If a system is asleep and its network card is capable of a wake on LAN, 
the uh, config, uh, I should say the configuration manager will reach out there, wake that machine up, do the updates that it needs, let it go back down into its hibernation or, or completely turned off state. Now we do that uh, through the way in which we configure the rules. As I said, it will continue uh, continually patch and update systems. Gives you the ability to push out new software. Uh, you can make the, uh, some of your rules based on specific templates and guidelines. The other thing that it does for us is it keeps track of our inventory. Keeping track of what we have out there as far as hardware. Keeping track of what operating systems we have. Keeping track to see that you have the proper licenses for the software that are out there so you don't find yourself in any type of uh, civil or criminal uh, violations through uh, piracy of uh, software. As I said, it has remote control capabilities. It gives you the, the ability to make sure that, uh, that uh, everything is being maintained. And again, it does so usually with a series of agents that are involved so that we can um, have that ongoing communications with the configuration manager. It is important to know that, again, you can have many com uh, configuration manager servers that are out there working for a larger enterprise. Some may be remotely connected, so it's uh, easier to uh, have staging computers where maybe your updates, your, up, um, your images, and everything else are put closer to where they're needed. But again, the uh, configuration manager is, uh, is a way of, uh, of making, I guess we could say, uh, an easier task of being able to do the uh, work that we would normally have to do on a day-by-day -day basis. It'll take care of those uh, schedules for us. It will keep our, our centers up to date. And it will, uh, of course, hopefully add consistency and reduce the uh, potential of having errors in uh, the way in which we install software or updates. Well, so far we've talked a lot about tools that are uh, going out there and doing updates or gathering information. And uh, so here's one with Service Manager. That's about management, management of the processes and change control. Now, uh, we can make an argument that service management can actually make changes for you, but not on its own. And we're going to talk a little bit about how it all relates together. But that's, uh, its goal is to help us when it comes down to the uh, uh, actual management of uh, whatever it is that uh, we may see, like an incident. An incident that could be reported by a person, could be entered in uh, manually, could have been discovered automatically. Of problems. Yeah, there's a little bit of difference between an incident and a problem. And we'll talk about that as we uh, get into this, um, uh, the, you know, this portion of what we're doing. And of course, as I said, change, to be able to help us with the planning of changes. So when we think of this service manager, as I've been doing, just put it here in the middle of uh, my network. The goal of Service Manager is to basically allow users at one point, if we want to, to be able to connect and report an incident or a problem that they can uh, you know, talk about an outage or something that's uh, uh, poorly performing. Uh, maybe they've uh, been trying to log on to this server and, uh, and they're not getting anywhere. And that can then lead to the notification of our uh, admin staff or the uh, IT department to let them know about what the issues are and uh, to be able to start a process of being able to uh, go through and actually figure out what's wrong. Now this is the one probably of all of these that I'm going to talk the least of at the moment. But you're going to find out that this uh, service manager is really kind of uh, in the middle of all of the things that System Suite can do. Of course there's always going to be a related database that uh, we use to be able to uh, store the information of uh, of uh, the, the uh, jobs that we're doing. But the big thing about service management is, is that as we go through uh, an incident or a problem, besides it being reported, let's say, or even change, then it can be worked on to plan. By planning on it, you can uh, uh, you know, associate a, a variety of knowledge base articles. You can uh, upload uh, other files, maybe a diagram maybe uh, a white paper that uh, discusses uh, potential problems or potential issues. You know, it goes through an, an approval process. The approval process is to finally uh, basically, you know, sign off on the plan. And then, of course, it can uh, give us the action plan that we need to take care of this, uh, this uh, whatever the, the item is, the uh, work item, I guess, is the right term. It'll help us with that action plan that we can develop. We can follow it. And then, of course, when we're done, we can uh, then uh, report what's been accomplished. And, uh, and so it takes us through that and actually many more steps. But uh, it, is, it is important that we understand 
that it is just that change control, that process management to add actual management capabilities into, um, into our system, into uh, managing and maintaining our cloud. Now, Orchestrator is what they call a runbook automation tool. It gives us either a text-based or graphical-based overview of, let's just say, steps of uh, work to be done. And what that means is uh, basically that, as it sounds, as an orchestrator, we are going to uh, use this to help get things done that uh, none of the other system center products might be able to do just right out of the box. We can create specific steps, specific workflows uh, that um, might not be normal if uh, maybe you have some specialized process or you need to launch a script. And, and so what you're going to be found or finding here is a runbook designer. I'm not even going to draw a picture of a network. And on this runbook designer, you'll have a list of uh, items here that you can uh, click and drag onto the screen. A and you could say, all right, let's start here by waiting for uh, an alert. Ah, see, now I'm going to give it away. Where's that alert going to come from? Well, it could come from operations manager. It could come from the service manager. It could be something that we initiated on ourselves. And after that alert is done, it can then say, all right, there's my start. That's what I do. Let's say that the alert is, uh, like I said before, some process uh, or service has stopped on a system. Then we can uh, have another step that could ask the question, is that service actually running or not? If it's a no, then we might say, all right, then let's start that service. If it's a yes, then maybe we'd say uh, stop it. Maybe there's a problem with it. And as the next step, come back over here and start it up again. And so what you can do is you are orchestrating a series of steps, step-by-step -step, uh, instructions that will actually go out and proactively do these actions that we're requesting it to do. So, you know, it's um, not just as easy as, uh, as I said, starting a, a process or a service. Like I said, it could launch a script. It could process a report. For that matter, we could have it move data from one system to another. Um, Orchestrator is designed to help us come up with a way of taking care of our tasks through the um, automation process. That we set these up and we can run them whenever it uh, is called for, whether it's uh, you know, going to do this all on its own automatically, as I just talked about with this uh, service starting or, or having a problem, uh, or whether or not it's uh, based on um, uh, you know, any number of things that uh, could start this entire process. Uh, they used to call it Apollos, and uh, but now, of course, it's called Orchestra. And it is a big part of this, uh, of the entire System Center suite. They like to tell us that it is an end-to-end -end solution because it can work with multiple different platforms. As I said, if I created a process to move data from one machine to another, then that means Orchestra is reaching out to the first machine, telling it to, uh, to issue some command to transfer data uh, to another machine. And of course, again, I'm making a very simple workflow. In fact, they actually encourage your workflows um, to be somewhat uh, short so that it doesn't get so complicated that, uh, that uh, it's a little harder to, to fathom. They have looping capabilities. They have waiting capabilities uh, for the logic of the steps that you need to go through. And that's what it's uh, designed to do. It's, uh, it's, again, it's, it's something that does have to really work with the other System Center products. And I hope to be able to, uh, to um, diagram that for you and talk about how they can uh, kind of all interrelate, at least to some extent, because the goal, again, is to give you this preview so you kind of understand what this tool is doing when we begin to have our discussions about uh, how it works within the cloud. Well, I'm going to draw a big hard drive. Data Protection Manager is just that. It's a tool with a specialized backup and uh, recovery uh, capability. And what Data Protection Manager does, and which is really kind of cool about this, is it's a central location of being able to set up backups. So I can have many databases, many servers out here that I'm going to be doing a backup of, uh, exchange servers, file servers, and it was designed uh, to work with uh, these different types of servers specifically. Uh, so F for file server. And, and it does work like so many other things, is that we install an agent on these devices. And that agent's job is to uh, be able to interact with the uh, Data Protection Manager. And what it can do for me is it can issue orders to, let's say, back up a file. 
And when we back up that file, that file you're going to learn could, uh, or the files could uh, go to another disk somewhere, which you could then transfer to uh, tape. Don't know if I can draw one of those old fashioned uh, cassette tapes. Um, you could go from one disk to another disk and then send it off into a cloud service that uh, handles the backup. These backups, you'll find out, can be automated to every 15 minutes if you wanted to, uh, or as infrequently as you wanted to be able to, to do the backups. And the backups are efficient. You're going to find out that, you know, maybe I have uh, this one really big file inside of this uh, database, and so the first time it's slow because I'm backing up this entire file. And once that uh, file's been backed up and somebody comes and makes a couple changes, I only need to go and take those little changes and merge them onto the original file so that I am up to date with uh, what's occurring. And that's, uh, again, another one of those great things that, uh, that can help us. Now, we know that uh, the, the goal here uh, in uh, backing up the data is to fit with some sort of um, business continuity plan or disaster recovery plan or just to protect you from the loss of information, whether accidental or malicious. And that's why we call it data protection. It, uh, it acts as a backup to clients, to server file systems, as I said, Exchange, SharePoint, SQL, Hyper-V, the actual guest sessions on Hyper-V if I want to, uh, and it does it on a continuous basis. And I may have uh, so many uh, machines that I may have many of these DPM servers out there, but as I, as I said again, it's central management. I can manage them all from one point and uh, have them all being responsible for uh, the communications and, uh, and performing the backups. It's also something that will do restores quite well. So if uh, I did back up uh, the information, as you saw my arrow going this direction, I can restore. I can restore to a certain point in time if I want to. Um, I can also uh, uh, do just a file uh, type of uh, restore if that's all I want. I can even allow a user who is just uh, sitting on their workstation who knows that they're uh, working with files that they had backed up and they can make a self-service request for uh, the uh, permission to restore a file and DPM would uh, help them if, uh, if you get granted that permission to be able to do that simple restore. So it's, uh, that's where it is in the world of, of uh, protection and of course of uh, being able to uh, restore. And it's more than just a restore of a file or of a folder but you can, or to a point in time but we can restore all the way to a completely dead system if we wanted to. It's, um, uh, it was designed to do all of it, right? To gather the system state if you need, to gather the files and folders or whatever it is that your uh, goal is as far as uh, managing these backups. So it's, uh, it's a really kind of cool tool. I can't wait to talk to you a little bit more about it as we uh, get into it so you have a better understanding about how it goes through the backup process and uh, how efficient it is in the backup process but it is uh, really, um, I think, one of my favorite tools out of all of the uh, System Center. And so is uh, Operations Manager as well, but, uh, but just for the, um, I think, the big changes that uh, we had in the technology, that this is just a, a fantastic part of the suite. Well, the Virtual Machine Manager, it says it's uh, Hyper-V Host Management. So, you know, I've drawn already a little Hyper-V host. I just call it a host. And uh, on that host, maybe several virtual machines that are running that uh, we need to manage. Uh, maybe there are some slots open so uh, or for uh, room for memory and the rest of it. And of course, there uh, are the understanding that we may have many different hosts out there that uh, we need to work with. And so the goal of uh, VMM is from a central location to be able to administratively work with all of these different hosts. It'll also work with the storage area network in the background that uh, a lot of these uh, uh, images may be running on or virtual machines may be stored on or at least their virtual hard drives. Uh, it has its own database for its own configuration uh, commands so that uh, we can uh, move the VMM server anywhere that we wanted to. And what this uh, virtual machine manager can do is just really help facilitate uh, all aspects of, um, of uh, the virtual environment. We have a library that we'll talk about that we can store virtual machines in. And with very few commands, we can uh, go to the library, pull out a virtual machine, and have it automatically install on another host. Or if one of the hosts fails, I can then take that virtual machine that may have its virtual hard drive in a storage area network and repoint it to another host so I can bring that, um, that machine back online. Um, so I, I have a faster recovery. Or if 
I know I want to take a host down for maintenance, I can make a virtual machine move from one location to another. We call it a live migration. One of the coolest things, though, I think now with uh, 2012, is that we can gather the components that we want to put together and tell the uh, VMM that we want to make this a private cloud. And the virtual machine manager is going to go out there and take all of those components that we listed and make it become a cloud service that we can manage as that one service. Um, it, it, like I said, it just uh, goes on and on and on with uh, the capabilities of uh, some of the stuff that um, is available to us. And uh, its job is um, you know, to take over from you having to go to each individual host or do remote management of each host and having to manually take care of a lot of the issues that I've just talked about. I almost don't know where to begin in talking about putting it all together, but I'll start with the server. And this server is, uh, let's say, crucial to us. And, uh, and, uh, and it's hosting an application. And um, in fact, let's say it's uh, hosting a web page. And that web page, uh, and you'll see this diagram so many times as we uh, go through here, may have some uh, servers that are uh, operating uh, some business logic for us. Maybe uh, some of them are uh, connecting to banks for credit cards. And uh, others may um, you know, be uh, something specific for, I don't know, shipping uh, products uh, to people. And then in the background, I have a database that uh, is keeping track of all of my transactions. Uh, all of the uh, customer orders, maybe it's uh, I've just suddenly developed a uh, distributed application. And, uh, and all of these pieces need to be able to work uh, for us. And, and if they don't, then we have some problems. So one of the first things we talked about was the operations manager. Operations manager, working with the agents installed on each of these components and reporting to operations manager, will keep track of the uh, performance, the uh, counters on these devices. But it can also test applications for me as well. And it can test it uh, as the server itself that it's on, or it can test it as a user. Uh, and, and we'll talk about some of those things. And of course, we're waiting for uh, the potential of hearing about some sort of an alert or an event that's going to trigger an action. OK. Well, operations manager, let's say, got an alert. One of the things I could do with that operations manager is send the alert off to my service manager. The service manager can then send my email off to people, and maybe my service manager will uh, go out and uh, register that alert over here with Orchestra. And Orchestra may have a run book that uh, talks about what we need to do to be able to fix this particular problem. And so it can start uh, going and uh, doing whatever configuration commands are required to, draw, to try to bring a service or a system back up online. And, uh, and so right there, what I wanted to show you is a little bit of the interaction between these tools that, uh, that we have. Um, you know, we could also, I said, have users so send in an email to start a service plan, which may uh, start something with uh, Orchestra to, uh, to handle uh, whatever the issues are. Maybe Orchestra realizes at some point it needs to work with a virtual machine manager to move a virtual machine from one location to the next so that that virtual machine manager can then reach out and go to all the hosts and to the virtual images or go to its library and start that process. If VMM uh, suddenly encounters an error, it too can send an alert off to operations manager, which may again trigger something as a new service that's going out there. Uh, you know, we could uh, start a change request process here on the service manager. And that change request, again, may trigger something in Orchestra to try to uh, automatically implement the change. Um, or it may just start us in the process of being able to do real change management, which is to uh, go through the uh, steps of gathering information, of getting the supporting papers and documentations, results of lab uh, tests, and uh, the uh, sign-off uh, process. All of those are uh, what we can get out of, uh, out of this uh, system. VMM may also rely on something like the Data Protection Manager to tell all of the uh, hosts on its uh, Hyper-V, or to tell the hosts to uh, maybe start doing backups of all of their um, virtual machines. And again, if uh, there's a problem with that, we can see uh, this, uh, again, report errors. And nothing said that uh, if there was an error that I couldn't report it directly to the Service Manager, because I certainly can. And, uh, and so again, I hope what you're seeing here is that there is an interaction, and I haven't even gotten into all of the interactions between these product lines, 
uh, that are within the suite. But they uh, all can bring a benefit. They can all help uh, keep this network at its uh, peak performance for us and to help us in recovering from uh, so many different uh, things that may have potentially been a slowdown or even an outage. But uh, they do communicate. They work side by side with each other. Not installed on the same server, certainly. Uh, oh, and the best part is that almost all of them are going to report their information off to a data warehouse. And as I said, that data warehouse can then publish a uh, widget that you can put on your dashboard, or it may uh, publish uh, something to a SharePoint server so that uh, people who are um, in the same SharePoint site could uh, look at that information and have a good idea of uh, how you know their particular interests are being served by the uh, software or the hardware that's being, man uh, being monitored. And that's uh, kind of what I mean by putting it all together. There certainly is a lot more to it, but uh, the goal here is just to make sure that you understand that they, they truly do coexist and interact with each other and they can through the uh, as complex of a situation as you want you can add automation to try to uh, recover from uh, any potential damages that could occur in the network.